Up until recently, I didn't use ESLint much myself, but now I'm pretty sold. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you five reasons you should turn on and use ESLint immediately. What's up everyone, my name is James Quick, and I do weekly videos on web development. I talk a lot about JavaScript and VS Code, and in this case, I'm gonna combine those two and talk about ESLint inside of VS Code and why you should turn it on and why you should use it in your everyday workflow. So I'll give you five reasons why. So let's go ahead and head over to VS Code and we'll start talking about it. All right, the first reason here is consistency. And this is especially important if you're working with one other person or a team of people. And the sample code that I have up here is the JQQ memes project. You can find it at jqqmemes.com where you can create memes about me from random screenshots in my YouTube videos. And my uh, podcast co-host from the Compressed FM podcast that you can find a link to below, Amy Dutton created the original version of this project. And after she had created it, I would go in and make some changes and my formatting was different than hers. And so what she ended up doing was setting up ESLint so that we had rules in place so that our formatting on either end worked really well. Now, if your formatting is not consistent, you might have some issues in Git commits, for example, or Git pushes that shows every file or so many files have been changed, even though it's only changed in the sense of formatting. You don't want that to happen. You really want only the real changes in code that you write to be present inside of those track changes in GitHub. So a couple of examples of that in terms of formatting. If I say I've got a const string and I want it to be hello, notice that I'm getting these uh, red, this red squiggly underneath hello. And if we hover over it, ESLint is saying you should use single quotes instead of double quotes. Also, if I were to uh, tab this thing over, so if I did uh, const name equals James, you'll get the uh, same error, but you'll also see in a second that we can fix this. So this is inconsistent, but I do have rules in place to show me that this is inconsistent. Now, the second reason you should check out ESLint is the fact that you can not only see that these things are inconsistent, but you can have this automatically take over and format it for you. So there's a config flag in your settings in VS Code that can turn this on to do this automatically. So now when I do save, it's going to remove that tab that was back here and also convert these to uh, single quotes instead of double quotes. So with your ESLint configuration, you can define consistency, you can define your rules, and then also by using the ESLint extension inside of VS Code and turning on the auto save flag inside of VS Code as well, you can have that stuff automatically fix any of those formatting issues so you don't have to worry about it as you write your code. All right, now the next thing is that ESLint can help you find bugs in your code. So it can help you find, if you've defined something and haven't used it, I've got a couple of examples down here and lots of other things. One example here is if I were to uncomment this and I wanna do a check to say, hey, if this is loading property is true, go ahead and log out true. Well, if you have been in JavaScript for a while, you know there's a difference between double equals and triple equals. And because of that, you should be very intentional about which one you use. Now, different people have different opinions about how this works. We'll talk more about that in a second. But in general, it's probably best practice to always use triple equals so that you're intentionally making a more direct comparison. Triple equals includes the data type and it doesn't automatically cast either side to try to fit the other and then compare. Triple equals will compare the values and the data type, which is probably what we want most of the time. So if you get into the habit of forcing yourself to use triple equals, then later on you can make an educated or informed decision to use double equals if you need to. So an example here is uh, this ESLint configuration is requiring a triple equals instead of doubles. So now I can add that and now I feel a little bit better that I'm making the right comparison. Now let's say that I did want to do a specific comparison of uh, double equals instead of triples. I could hover in VS Code and go to quick fix and I could disable this for one line. So if you add this comment here, I can actually do the double equals here. So this gives me the ability to make a decision to change away from triple equals, but I have to make an informed and specific intentional decision to do that. So I stay in the practice of using triple equals. Now, another side benefit of this, and this is reason number four, of using ESLint, having these rules in place, and then knowing when and how to break them is that you learn JavaScript more. 
So let me show you how this configuration is set up. This has an ESLint RC file, which extends the base rules that are defined by WestBoss. This is WestBoss's package for ESLint configuration. And if we go back over, I'll put a link to this if you're curious, here are all the ESLint rules that WestBoss has in place for his configuration. In addition to, it then extends the Airbnb and Prettier. So it extends two different configurations, Airbnb and Prettier, and then he adds his stuff on top, which means when I open up this project, there's actually tons of rules that are already defined here that I never would have thought about, which means that every time I get called out for some sort of random rule that I've never heard of, it gives me the ability to think about why that rule is in place and how that could potentially make me a better JavaScript developer. So now I'm thinking more about the code I'm writing. I'm thinking more about the structure, about the performance, about all these specific things that I hadn't necessarily thought about when I could just write whatever code I wanted. So you're getting that consistency by working with other people. You get the automatic formatting. You're getting debug or being able to find some errors along the way. And you're also just thinking more about the JavaScript that you're writing. This is actually probably my favorite feature of ESLint and especially extending something that has lots of rules in place. It's just things that I might not have thought about before and it opens my mind up to writing better JavaScript. Now the last item here, the last reason you should uh, use ESLint number five is it can make you a better JavaScript developer by thinking about what you're doing. And after you think about what you're doing, you have the ability to decide I don't really believe in that rule. You may come up with a different opinion than someone else and that's totally okay. So not only are you learning and thinking about things along the way, you're able to then take that thinking and learning time and translate that to your own opinions. You can see inside of here, there's a few different rules that I have overridden from that uh, West Boss configuration because I saw them and I decided that I didn't necessarily need them at that time. So you have the ability to decide based on whatever configuration you're working with, you can customize it and really make it your own. And you can see that's what Wes Boss did where he inherited from Airbnb and Prettier, but then made his own decisions on what stuff he cared about and what he did not. So you have the ability to learn and think about the JavaScript that you're writing more, which then helps you become a better JavaScript developer, which then means you're able to form your own opinions more about what better JavaScript actually means. All right, so that's five reasons that I think you should try out and use ESLint on a consistent basis. This wasn't a configuration and setup video, so if you wanna know how to set up ESLint inside of VS Code, let me know in the comments below and I can work on that video. In the meantime, I have a cheat sheet on VS Code that you can check out with a link in the description below as well. Thanks for checking out the video and I'll catch you next time.